aside the coupon. Hello, dear friends. Greeting to you all. My appreciation to all those who are still in the struggle to restore the lost sovereignty of the Biafran people as a result of British imperial ambition of which Nigeria is one of our disastrous creation. Let me start by asking everyone to observe a minute silence for all those who died to protect and restore the sovereignty of the Biafran people from the British and Fulani colonial ambition. Although silence is golden, but there are times it is necessary to talk things go haywire. Of recent, our dear compatriot Alaji Asari Dokubo, whom we know and had made, who had made his own contribution to the restoration of the sovereignty of Biafran people, had raised issue worth addressing and in order to avoid unnecessary distraction and to keep the struggle focused on the goals we set out to accomplish, I thought it wise to address the issue raised. The issue raised by our dear compatriot are, I ordered the mother of cleric. That's number one. Number two, I collected money from Atiku. Number three, master slave relationship between diverse Biafran ethnic groups. Number four, that I am a scam and fraud in the Biafran struggle. I will make my time, I will take my time to address each point, one after the other, and let her indulge our dear comrade to reveal to Biafrans what he thinks should be done differently in order to achieve Biafra restoration. Number one, I never ordered the killing of any cleric, and if anyone thinks I did, he or she should provide evidence that I wasted Biafran resources to kill a fellow Biafran whose death cannot help IPOP restore Biafra. Number two, I never collected money from Atiku, and if anyone is in doubt, let him or her approach Atiku for answers. Both PDP and APC agents approached me and told me to give up the struggle for Biafra, and I told them that IPOP will only do so if the following things will be fulfilled. Number one thing to be fulfilled is full resource control and not mere 13% derivation. The second option here is opening of a deep sea port in Aquaibom, Cross River, Rivers, Bayelsa and Delta State, starting with the construction of Ibaka, Ibeno, Bakasi deep sea port. The third option here is the establishment of international airport an inland port in all states of the defunct eastern and midwestern region in order to emancipate Biafran from the economic strangulation. The fourth option is full implementation of PIB, Petroleum Industry Bill. Fifth option is full autonomy to all Biafran states in the areas of security tax, royalties, and legislation, etc. The sixth option here is lot more. We lifted a boycott of election because both parties agreed to our terms and condition. If we are wrong to give the Nigerian elite the opportunity to fail themselves, let the Biafrans voice out. Number three, it is very disheartening that such a great compatriot like Alaji Asari Dokubo will descend so low to call one of the ethnic groups of Biafran land slaves and another masters. Throughout the history of the Biafran people, never was it recorded that any ethnic group invaded others and enslaved them. The Igbos, being the largest of them, were neither subjugated nor okay, were neither subjugated nor subjugated other people. Yes, it is true that a lot of Igbos were sold out as slaves, but it was done by fellow Igbo, notably the Arochuku slave traders, through the coastal nation who acted as middlemen of which Ijo were one of them. Alaji Asari Dokubo can enlighten the Igbos which Ijo king or war Keno chief left the creek in order to conquer and enslave the Igbo in the hinterland of Biafra land. The Biafra we seek to restore is still the same that encouraged the peaceful coexistence of all ethnic nations which led to the creation of monthly multi-ethnic cultural communities, notably Arochuku, Abiriba, Igbanke, etc. If Alaji Asari Dokubo wants a Biafra of master-slave relationship, then he is free to create one, but 
we won't be partner in such a project. The Biafra we seek is one based on equal rights and privileges and not a master-slave relationship. Alaji Asari Dokubo, you said I am a scam and a fraud. I will be grateful if you can provide evidence of me diverting the contribution of fellow Biafrans for my personal use. Remember that only a stupid fraudster will dare confront Jibril. May Elohim be the judge if I am a fraudster and should expose and replace me if I am guilty in his sight. Alaji Asari Dokobo, we have come so far and we should not allow our oppressors to continue to divide and conquer our oppressed people. If you think my style of struggle and leadership will not get us Biafra, kindly tell fellow Biafrans the way forward so that they can join your ranks and fall with my full support and blessing. Mazi Namdekano, Radio Biafra. All right, guys, this is um, Namdekano actually replying Asari Dokobo. Asari Dokobo, in one of the videos I just uh, posted, he has alleged that um, the Igbos were, were slaves to the Ijos and that an Ijo man cannot eat the food cooked by an Igbo as they were formerly slaved to them. He went ahead, he said a lot of things and um, among the things he said, he said he is threatening to deal with Namdi Kano, that Namdi Kano is a scam and uh, I hope you listen to the defense Namdi Kano have raised and he has actually taken his time, showed a lot of uh, humility. I, I saw a lot of humility in this uh, response. He is not actually um, boasting. There is no element of puff up in his response to Asari at Dokubo. So I will equally advise that the two camps should desist from further uh, violence. There should be no violence. IPOP should not brand Asari Dokubo as an enemy. It is just a mere understanding and actually, Asari Dokuba was the aggressor because he actually raised up the issue that Namdi Kano assassinated um, uh, the cleric, that is Prophet Anthony Nwoko. And why Asari Dokuba had to say this was that, leading to the death of uh, Anthony Nwoko, Anthony Nwoko has raised an allegation that the IPOB are actually after him. He said that he has received a lot of death threats from IPOP. So I think it is what actually instigated Asai Dokobo to make that allegation that Nam Dikano, you know, um, ordered the, the, the killing or the assassination of that cleric. Because leading up to that time, the cleric had been complaining that because of what he has said, because of the truth he has raised, what he has said that he has come into a loggerhead with Namdekano and with IPOP that he has been receiving death threat and one day they saw him actually died so nobody know who killed him you know there's something in this life if you have a problem with somebody another enemy could come in kill that person just to put you inside trouble yes it happens so you should be careful of threatening somebody maybe some um, IPOP, some some uh, fanatical IPOP members may have crossed the line, gone too far, and threatened the cleric to shut his mouth up. And so, who knows who must have killed him? An enemy may have come in, taken advantage of what is happening to create discord, to create division, to create dissentment among the member of IPOP. So we don't know who killed. The cleric, so but Asai Dokobo stood in the line and directly accused Namdi Kano of actually killing him. In, and he is basing his um, intelligence and his own fact based on what the cleric raised. The cleric had actually raised that IPOP were threatening him. If you watch some of his video, you will see that. But that is not um, enough to have caused this trouble, to have caused this. Uh, 